let's get this uh, hooked up. Uh, this is good. This is good. Uh, okay, staff, please. Uh, so, hello, everybody. Does anyone have the Q&A 
you made that on the other hand? Okay, yeah, so you've heard these jokes before, but I still laugh. Um, so yeah, hentai, hentai is great because you can be in it for like the key romantic stuff, and you can also be in it for silly, crazy John McCain, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and sex stuff. I cannot wait to see what Japan comes up with for Donald Trump. It's like, oh, I, I build that dick ten feet higher. <laughs> And then this one, you know, this dude wakes up and there's a giant dick on his head, as you can see. Uh, and he, he realizes that the only way to get rid of this is to masturbate it really quick. Uh, but when he does that, he does that to more pop up and like that. <laughs> so, yeah. And it goes, it goes on and on and on and on. Japan. So, two years ago, um, we announced Baku Books. Is, is everyone familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah. So it was actually in May, um, in, right in June when I went to Japan and signed a publishing deal because that was the Phoenix Comic Con I missed, as Greg said. I was like, I emailed them and I'm like, yo dude, sorry, I'm doing something important, wish me luck. Um, and I went to Japan and it was after, you know, this, the largest publisher in Japan of Hentai Manga. Um, you know, Faku had been running for six or seven years up to that point hosting scanlations, we had our own scan, scanlation team, which is sort of like a fan translation of this work from Japan. So it wasn't official or anything. And the largest publisher in Japan took notice of us, because um, we obviously got really, really big, and we're still really, really big. Uh, and they saw us, and they were like, hey, we're going to sue the shit out of you. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that was in, I think, April of, of uh, 2014. So, you know, I replied to this. Like, hey, don't sue us. Uh, you know, we're not in this for piracy. You know, we're not doing this to hurt the publisher or the artist or anyone else. We're doing it because we just want to fat. You know? <laughs> like, we love, we love the work that you publish. We love the work that these artists are putting out. And you've been ignoring us as, a, you know, as an audience up until now. Um, so that's what sort of led to the situation where, you know, the only way we can read this stuff is to do it ourselves, and translate ourselves, and skate it. And so that's why I said, and I was like, hey, instead of suing us out of existence, what if we work together to bring your work to the world? And they said, okay. <laughs> I, I, it still blows my mind that they said that, because it literally changed, uh, that one, you know, series of emails literally changed the hentai industry in the world. Um, so a few months of negotiating, I went out to Japan, uh, we signed this publishing deal. I was like, hey, so if we do this, you know, we want to release digital and paperback together. Uh, we want to do high quality digital release, and there are plenty of people who still want paperbacks, and they're like, okay, yeah, that's fine, you can do that. I was like, oh shit, really? That's awesome. And I was like, well, you know, censorship kind of sucks, and fuck that, this is America. <laughs> so we don't want any black bars or mosaics or anything, so everything we publish, uh, we wanted to do it uncensored. They're like, Okay, yeah, you can do that. And I was like, really? <laughs> and then I was like, and, and you know, finally, like, we don't want to release this with any form of DRM whatsoever. So anytime you buy a book, a digital book, the user can just download it onto as many devices as they want, as many times as they want. Once they buy it, they're free to do anything with it. And they're like, okay, yeah, we understand that. And I was like, what? <laughs> of course, you know, I had a bunch of evidence to back all this up because years of running Faku and building a massive audience. But is here in this room in, in Arizona. Um, I was able to use that and say, look, all these people want to support what you're doing. Just let us support you the way we want to support you, and then people won't pirate it because you know you'll be giving people what they want. Uh, and then we walked away with literally the best publishing deal in the world, which is like unlimited access to their catalog of titles. So yeah, let's hear for that. That was fun. Out of my apartment alone, and then we got this crazy publishing deal. And now, Faku, we have like 20 employees out in uh, Portland, Oregon, that moved everything out there. Uh, we have health insurance, we have like <laughs> dental, <laughs> visual. So we're like a real company that spawned two years ago uh, when I skipped this company. <laughs> and, and that's really awesome. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, our first book was Renai Sample by Homunculus. I picked out like the best vanilla title imaginable. And, this was, uh, and it is. It is a fantastic book. This, to, the, to, to today, this is our 
have a best-selling title, if there was a best-sellers list for hentai, this would be on the top of it around the world. Um, it's a great book. And when, when we announced all of this, I was afraid, you know, I didn't know if the community would actually respond positively to this. Because it was essentially saying, hey, this thing you've been getting for free this whole time, you know, what do you think about paying for it now instead? <laughs> you know, that's a hard, hard thing to convince people of. But we did it, and, you know, to my, my surprise, people around the world bought the book, and they started posting pictures of the book with all their waifus. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really awesome, and we were able to show Japan that we weren't all just in it to pirate, uh, which was important. So we kept publishing books. So for the next year, we published Kunikano by Pion Kitty, Welcome to Togahara Apartments by Kisurai Guzman. This is an artist who I've been fapping to since I was like 14. And we got to publish his book, which like blew my mind. Uh, we published The Luring Woman by Q. who's the first female artist we published. And she's awesome. She does a non-hentai ballet manga, which is really cute. Uh, we published uh, Okama by Hanafuda. This is a really cool book. It's like a... It's like an art book that's a comic. It's like this beautiful, beautiful book. And while I was in Japan signing that publishing deal, like the day after, I went to walk around uh, Akiba. And on the weekends in Tokyo, they have like yard sales at all of like the trains, like this, the stops of the subway and the train. I don't know what it's called, but like every, the locals will just kind of come and set up. And depending on which area of Tokyo you're in, like the yard sale will be sort of themed differently. So in Akiba, it's all. You know, we have shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking around, I see this book laying on one of the tables, and I'm like, oh shit, I've read the scanlation of this, this is awesome. And I pick it up, and I'm flipping through it, and then I realize it was published by the company we just signed the publishing deal with. And I call them up, like, right then, and I'm like, hey, do you think we can publish this book? And I'm like, you want to publish that? That's like 15 years old. And I was like, yeah, I fucking want to publish this. <laughs> it's awesome. They said, yeah, and then, you know, a few months later, we published it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the, that was our first entry into Lolly and uh, Shoda and stuff, some controversial theme, so it's an even more special book. Uh, we published Melty Gaze by Hyoko Gro, we published Porno Switch by Hisasi, another legendary vanilla artist. We published Love Written by Namita, TDK by Ishike, this was the best-selling hentai manga in all of Japan in 2014. Published Demon Real by uh, Takeda. Mr. Published Kisaragi Gun is a second book. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like its fifth book, but his book after the first is called A Straight Line to Love. Published Shoujo Material. Uh, this is the best selling hentai manga of all time in Japan. The author made so much money off of this and a few chapters following it that he literally just moved to the mountains and just like lives on a farm now. <laughs> <laughs> and when we requested this book, whenever we request a book, you know, they go out and find the artist and then we start talking to them. When they requested this book, they had to like send someone out to the farm mountain land to find them <laughs> and tell them what Faku was. <laughs> I've never heard the word. Yeah. <laughs> and he said yes, which was, which was awesome. And this was actually the first book that Faku scanlated like six or seven years ago. So if you ever read this book or any of the chapters from it, uh, before we published it, uh, in its uncensored form. That was our original skin of it too. Reading the alien chapter. Yeah, there's a chapter with aliens. Maybe I'll show you later. Oh <laughs> uh, we published not the second book, and we need to publish both of both uh, meaty mixes, which is good meaty. <laughs> published Kira Kira by the Mount. After school vanilla by Key. Peachy Buck Girls. <laughs> I, I tried to convince our translator to translate the title as Big Booty Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but we did not let him do that. Uh, and is a really cool artist because we brought him to Anime Expo as a special guest last year. So we actually brought him from Japan. He never left Japan before. And uh, we brought him to America to meet all of his fans. He did a bunch of signings. He did a special comic just for the convention. When he landed in Japan, you know, I took him out to dinner that night. And the next day, the first thing he wanted me to do was take him to Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> so I took him to Hooters, and uh, they forgot half of our order. It was awful. Like, <laughs> totally messed it all up, and I'm like apologizing to this Japanese dude who I like admire. And he's like, oh no, don't worry. In Japan, they fuck up the order all the time, too. <laughs> that's, not, that's not why people come here. <laughs> Explain to do that. He's an awesome dude. Uh, we published his, his second book, uh, 
uh, he's actually like a seventh or eighth book, uh, Body for Flood. This was the Dojin comic that he made just for America. So it's super limited. You can find it on Faku, you can buy the digital, and I think we have like, actually, I think we completely sold out of the paperback, so it's pretty much gone. Maybe you can find it on uh, eBay or something. <laughs> We published the job of a service committee member. This book is fucking awesome. Uh, yes, I highly recommend it. It's a little fucked up, but it's good. <laughs> it's really fucked up. Uh, this is job. It's one of those stories where it's like there's a school, a high school, and there's like a club, and it's their job to relieve the stress of all of the other students <laughs> with their bodies. But you're forced into it. You don't get to. Win. Yeah, they all wear these service committee jackets, that's what they're called, the service committee. And we made these jackets, like we talked to the artist, we got permission to make these like track service committee jackets. Uh, we sold out of them in the first like hour here. <laughs> um, and they'll, they'll go on the site soon. It's cool because well, the day we got them into the office, everyone was like excited, all the editors and translators and everyone, so they all put them on. And we're in Portland, we're, our office is in downtown Portland, right? to the college there, uh, PSU. And then we like went and walked like as a gang, like <laughs> to get lunch that day. And we're like walking through the campus in our service committee jackets. And this guy runs up and he's like, hey, uh, I, what's that jacket exactly? <laughs> like he knew what it, what it was from. And we're like, oh, we're the service committee. If you need anything, just let us know. <laughs> A Gal, A Bitch, and Whatnot by Kujira. This is actually our next, next book. Uh, this is a cool story because the artist of this, this is his first book ever, came out like three or four months ago in Japan. Uh, did really well, but he made the mistake of sort of going and poking around the internet looking at piracy of his first book in Japan. And so he ended up on like, you know, torrents or something and saw like hundreds of thousands of downloads of this book. He got super depressed and he started tweeting about how he was like, didn't want to live anymore, and he was so sad that people were stealing his work, etc., etc. And we're like, whoa, 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 no, 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 don't, don't be sad, don't, no, don't. We sort of explain, like, you know, piracy is, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, don't let it, like, consume you worrying about that. And now we're going to be publishing his first book in English. Um, which is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so he's not going to go, so. Uh, we're publishing, and we just started pre-orders on this today or yesterday, uh, Let's Do It by Saitam, which is a very straightforward title. <laughs> and this dude is also really cool. Um, he does tons of, tons of stuff. Uh, this book is recommended by Gen Gen Bochi, the dude who wrote Zero and, and fucking Madoka. Fucking Madoka. Fucking uh, so we're publishing this right now. Um, we're also, last year we announced that we're going to be working with Toshio Maeda, the creator of The Blue Girl, Legend of the Overfiend. He's like this 70-year-old old Japanese dude. He's, he's an awesome guy. We're going to be publishing his entire catalog of manga, uh, completely remastered in English, uh, which is crazy. It's literally crazy. Uh, he has like 60-something titles. We're going to be bringing all back. A lot of these had English releases way back in like the 90s. And they like cut out a bunch of chapters, you know, changes the character ages because it was a little different back then. They made it all like PC. I'm going to be publishing the original, uh, you know, the original work that he created. So that's really cool. I'm really excited about that. And I drink with him all the time. And he talks about rim jobs and hilarious. <laughs> uh, and that includes Legend of Thor, which got an anime adaptation. So this was like one of the first anime to come over to America outside of Japan, Legend of Thor. Uh, along with Akira and some of the Miyazaki ones, so this is like, like I have no idea how we how how we got the rights to publish this or why he why he decided to work with us, but I'm glad he did. He's a really cool guy. So yeah, that was the first year of Faku Books and sort of where we are today. And because everyone supported uh, what we were doing with that, and we were able to show Japan and the artists that yes. People will actually buy your books if you, you know, release them uncensored in English. We got permission to publish the magazines, which is what Faku is now. Wow. And this is huge. 
In Japan, there's monthly magazines that all of the chapters from these books appear in. So anytime you're on the internet and you see like a random chapter from something and you read it, in fact, that appeared in a hentai magazine in Japan in most cases. Um, and it's like Shonen Jump for hentai. <laughs> so the publisher we work with is the biggest publisher in Japan. They run the three largest magazines. Uh, Comic Kai Rakuten, Comic Zeros, and Comic Shitsu Rakuten. And if you walk into 7-Eleven in Japan, you can like get GQ, Playboy, and Comic Kai Rakuten, the hentai magazine. So because we were so successful with the books, they gave us permission to simul-publish these magazines in English. So the same day that a customer in Japan goes to buy the physical magazine, they don't even have access to the digital there, we put the first chapters of it on Faku in English, which is crazy. <laughs> and you're getting a better product technically because it's uncensored, they don't even get that in Japan. So every month we publish these three magazines, uh, the same day they come out. I guess something like 60 chapters a month, it's like 1,500 pages of, of content. There's like something like, a, you know, 50 artists or so. At this point, we've published over 300 artists, I think, like individual Japanese artists. And that's what the Faku subscription is and why we added it, because I wanted to simul publish these magazines, because that really is the dream, for there to be no delay between something being released in Japan and something being released in English around the world. And we were able to break down that barrier and really convince them to trust us uh, to do that, which is really cool. And that's the Faku subscription. Uh, and that's why you know, we added the subscription to Faku. And when you sign up, you get access to like this dope-ass reader, online reader, works nice on your phone. So if you ever want to like go to the bathroom in private and read, <laughs> uh, this is the cover of the first comic character 10 we ever published. And again, these are monthly magazines. So all of the best artists in Japan appear in these magazines. Boshi, Mob, Nishi Ayori, Carmen Tatsuro, Linda. Linda. And Linda's a cool artist because they're like hate, they absolutely hate anyone who's not Japanese. Linda. And they're like notorious for hating foreigners. Uh, and they're, they're one of the artists who's like really outspoken about foreigners just being pirates out to steal their content. And we're working with them, they, like they want to work with us to do it officially. So that was really cool. Hum House in here, Range Murata, Komi Kato, Michi King, Okara. Zero says artists like Oda Nan, Gomenasai, Distance, Tsukino Jogi, Ishike, F4U, Inu, Gorgeous Takarada, Nohita, tons and tons of great artists. Uh, and then we started doing skateboards. Did anyone see these at our booth? Yeah. The skateboards are really cool. I wanted to like find a way to even further work together with the artists in Japan on something new. Uh, you know, the skateboard culture really does is non-existent in Japan. So I pitched them, hey, what if you do original artwork for skateboards and we'll collaborate on them and release them, you know, in America? And all the artists were like, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome. And I'm like, sweet. So, so we launched with these five skateboards. I think we have five more, which we're going to be releasing in about a month on the website and at Anime Expo. We launched with a Boshi skateboard and a Reader skateboard and a Manashi skateboard. And the two on the ends are Western artists here in America, Omo Cat and Boom Slim. So one of my goals is to, in the same way we're sort of breaking down the barrier that separates Japan from America, I want to do the reverse as well and sort of introduce these Western artists to Japan in any way that we can do that. No, we're doing it. I'll also work with Native and bring over a bunch of their figures. <coughs> these are all the naked figures. That figure in the top right is actually the cover girl from the first book we published in the nice symbol. Which is really cool. I actually got to tour the native factory uh, like a week or two ago and got to see them chiseling all the nipples. <laughs> With like magnifying glasses making sure the pennies were just right. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, you know what we've been up to at Foggy the past for the past year or two, and that's what we did once we went official. Uh, December, or on December 31st, 2015, we removed all of the last of the scanlations and unlicensed content from Faku. Woo! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, because it was, it was, a. Uh, that was, that was a really scary day for me, because, you know, when I made Faku, I was just like, 
I, I very selfishly just wanted a, like a perfect place for me to fast. It was very much like, oh, I just want to make a website that I would use. And then that resonated with people. And then other people were like, yeah, actually, I really like what you're doing. You know, I like what you built. And then everyone was fapping on Fabu, and it grew and grew. <laughs> I was afraid, you know, because removing all the scalations was a, it was a necessary step to continue to grow and to work with more artists and more publishers in Japan. But at the same time, it's sort of like closing the door on you know what built Baku to what it was. So it was a tough game for me to turn, to, uh, turn that off, and I lost like thousands of my favorite lists on Faku. Oh, to this day, I'm still like, damn, what was that thing I found two, three years ago? I wish I could find that. <laughs> but yeah, it was a necessary step, and uh, it's been incredibly successful with subscription and everything. We've grown a lot. Like I said, 20 employees. We're going to be picking up more artists, more magazines. Uh, working with more publishers, we're going to be bringing back a lot of the lost content, including Dojinshi, so all like Naruto and Taya, and Fairy Tale, and everything that everyone likes, um, which I like. Uh, we're going to be bringing all of that back officially this time. So it'll all be added to the subscription, and if you want to like support it even further, there'll be an option to like straight up buy it, and then the artist will see everything that comes from that, which is cool. So yeah, okay, my throat is dying. <laughs> so yeah, we can uh, do some questions now uh, about Faku and where we've come, where we're going to go in the future. In front of a computer, that's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I know I already said that, but really it's thanks to everyone, like the people in this room, that we're anything at all. Because me going to Japan and saying, oh yeah, there's people who want to support what you're doing, like, you know, you actually proved that that was the case. Because, um, yeah, they, they saw that, and now we are part of their audience. They no longer they no longer just view foreigners as pirates. They now view, view us as part of their audience. So they'll say, okay, you know, Arizona loves food and art. <laughs> you know, they see, all, they see all the sales, right? So they think Los Angeles is, uh, in Mexico, which is a big anime convention. And we're going to be bringing two artists this year. Last year we brought Oshi. This year we're going to be bringing Saitom as a guest. He's a badass, yeah. He's going to be doing a bunch of doujinshi. He's going to have a bunch of exclusive doujinshi for you. Um, and we're going to be bringing a second guest. Who's it going to be? <laughs> we'll be bringing uh, Napata. Yeah. So we're bringing these two artists from Japan, they're both really scared to leave Japan. <laughs> uh, and they're going to meet all of their fans. So if you're out there for that convention, by all means come. You'll get to meet these artists and shake their hand. They're fast. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, they're great people, and none of them actually believe that people like their work outside of Japan. Like, they're all amazed that people actually come to see them. Um, and I'm like, yo, you have no idea how many times people back to your work. <laughs> like, if you think about it, the market outside of Japan is even bigger than the market inside of Japan. So we've been able to show them a lot of that stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's what Faku has become today. So does anyone have any questions uh, that I can answer about any of this? Do you guys actually plan on uh, publishing or uh, translating video games or like visual novels? Uh, yeah, so the question is, do you ever plan on venturing into visual novels, arrow games, things like that, to translate them. There are a few companies doing it who I think do an awesome job. Jast, uh, Sakai Project, and Manga Gamer. Uh, there are definitely games that they haven't brought over yet that I would like to see brought over, uh, like Fate Save Night, Those <laughs> uh, There's a lot of titles that haven't been brought over, so yes. I think we're going to start dabbling into some gaming stuff. On the side, I actually started up a little video game company or a video game publisher in Japan uh, with a friend of mine. We're bringing over some very indie Japanese titles. Our first one is like a sort of Toho shooter game without cute witch girls. It's like Toho, but without Tohos. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. What's the point? Yeah, it's my father. So, is there a question over here? I think I saw somewhere. Uh, yes. Um, so, how do you decide which books you want to bring over? Like, is it very biased, like just the stuff you like, or do you have to look at it like impartially? Like, that is a good question. Um, so, the question.
question was, uh, how do you decide what to bring over? Uh, the first ten titles that we picked, I just picked my favorite books. <laughs> so that was Leonardo with the Bernays Sample, Titty K, all of those peachy buff girls. <laughs> At this point, I think we're just starting, here we just started through our 23rd book. Uh, at this point, it's pretty much a 50-50 split between what does the staff at Fogu really want to read uncensored, and what do we think, um, or then we look at like requests on the forums, like, like Napata's second book was requested so hard it wasn't even funny. Uh, when, so we look at that, and we'll release about 50-50 of each. Like one thing that we're going to start doing is Yaoi and Yuri, which is super requested. Um, yeah. And we're going to start publishing Yao in here alongside all of our other books. So if you're into that, Kyle, we're going to open it up. We're going to have more big Yao hands than you can put your hands. It's the dream. It's the dream. <laughs> and uh, so if you've, ever, if you've ever seen one of our physical books in person, we, we print the books in the highest quality like we could possibly do. They're, they almost identically match the Japanese release of the books. And the reason we were able to do that is because Faku was just a company that I started. It wasn't even a company until like two or three years ago. It was just me fucking around. <laughs> um, you know, we weren't sort of held back by a larger you know, publisher who owned us. We weren't held back by bookstores who wouldn't carry our titles or anything like that. So we could just like decide what we thought was the best. Um, because a lot of English manga that get released, I think they do a shitty job. Like the paper will be kind of shitty looking like toilet paper. And they'll like remove chapters, they'll sort of like turn color pages black and white in the print. And like that does not make me want to buy the official release. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that things get pirated in the first place is when you release something shitty officially. Like people don't want to support that. They don't want to actually own it or actually like their just don't want to pay for it. Yeah, so we made a, a point to do an identical release to the Japanese version. So all the books have dust jackets, all the books have the posters inside, the full color pages, like super nice paper. They're really, really nice. So if you ever get the chance, if you haven't, like pick up one of our books and flip through it. You will be impressed. Yes? I Uh, and yeah, so 
we probably won't like publish poop stuff. <laughs> Not to keep mentioning poop. Uh, but that's more just like a personal preference. Like, you know, I would just be like, oh, let's skip that book. Um, but we, we're not going to shy away from anything either. Uh, which you'll see, like, some, like we, we picked up this book, NTR Squared, which is this crazy, crazy book. And we're working on publishing it. And it's, it's like all of those crazy controversial genres in one book. And then the girl dies at the end. <laughs> it's actually really sad. It's like real life. <laughs> uh, so yeah, hopefully that uh, answers your question. I saw a question way in the back earlier. Uh, that person? Yeah, you, yes. Whoever just, just started screaming. screaming. That was close. Oh, was that not a real question? Okay, who else has a question? Yes, wait. So oh, Mercy? Okay, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just saw you in the top of your head. No. Um, so, how do you explain your job to people you've just met? <laughs> Actually, uh, okay. <laughs> the question was how do you explain your job to people that you just met? Um, so, it's funny because, you know, we have this office, all of our computers, like, it, you know, the editors are all working there. At any given time, if you walk in the Fago office, there's like 30 dicks in your peripheral. <laughs> Zoomed way in. <laughs> Anytime the mailman comes, or like UPS delivers a delivery or DHL or whatever, they walk into like pornography everywhere. And they're always like, oh, well, you know, so, like half the time they'll be like, oh wow, this is so cool. And the other half of the time they're like, oh my fucking god. I got <laughs> So these days, you know, if I, it's just a stranger, I'll probably just be like, oh, I publish comic books, sort of like, sort of like Batman, but with like sex, sort of like Batman, but with sex. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. Basically yeah. Batman. Yeah. But I actually kept it a secret from my parents for like three years, which is a funny story, which I told the other night. I thought they would disown me. They didn't, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> when, when I first made it, I was like, how am I? I was like, okay, I can never be a teacher. I can never be a politician. <laughs> I can't go there. There's way too much dirt on me. So, you know, they say that anyone can be president, but not if you create a pornography website. <laughs> That's a career path that is no longer open to me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> when I, you know, way, way back when I first made it, I was like dating random people. I'd be like, oh God, how do I explain this to this girl that I'm out on a date with? That I so you like cartoon movies. <laughs> so yeah, uh, these days, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty open up about it. I'm really proud of it. Um, I work. I worked at Bioware for a few, probably like four or five, or probably like three or four more questions. Then we will take a pause, and then I'll come back. And we will do anti worth watching. Woo! So yes, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Do I draw? It? Uh, I only heard that you draw at all, and I can say that I do not draw very well at all. Um, I can do, I can actually draw a really nice elephant wearing a top hat. So if anyone wants me to draw you an elephant wearing a top hat, that is one thing that I can draw. Can you sign it? Um, maybe I can open up a box real quick, actually. Are you looking at porn right now? <laughs> I think you and a and like, we were doing sort of the same thing, and then I started playing, like, the Chrome browser game. Uh, so yeah, this is what Fokka looks like. We just started on our, on our latest book. can't see it. They can't see it. What are you doing? Oh, God. It's all sad. This is what Fokka looks like. Well, it, it's kind of It's a power it is. the entire website. So this is how uh, Fokka looks like. Yeah. This is our latest book. Let's do it with that marketing. <laughs> uh, we, we like to build these really nice promotional audience for the, for the books we build. No, that's switch. <laughs> Actually, we showed this the other day, but let me show the best sound effect I've ever seen. No. So, uh, this is actually our first Yahoo title we published. It's 
like, what's it called? Dangerous Love Affair, The Boy Swimming Club. It's like, it's like free. It's like free. But yeah, there's a great sound effect somewhere in here. So yeah, there's this like, new boy or he, he starts drowning, he's really bad at swimming. He's like, oh, this beautiful man saves him. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, this other dude gets jealous. Look at that evil look in his eyes. <laughs> he's down there and he's like, oh, yeah. I don't know, I could start making out or something. I don't really know what happens. Oh, yeah, kisses him. Grab. I think they double team this guy. That's where this is going. <laughs> Stuff that he or she he or creates, or, or 
all the stuff that they create. Um, I really like Zone, and we definitely need to collaborate on something with Zone. I think at one point, Zone and the Fox and Twitter were like tweeting at each other, and like, oh, we should email each other and collab. Oh, yeah, we should. And then we like both got lazy and never did. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't happen. Uh, one cool thing we've been doing too um, is public. <laughs> <laughs> How much I love you, my Ijoto. Finally, 
you get to fap. It's like a little, you know, I find that fapping, knowing that the artist is getting some, something out of it, like, makes the fap that much better. <laughs> uh, so they will bring us practice. more. <laughs> yeah, there, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on fun. So we'll wrap up with uh, one last question, then we'll take a 15 minutes break before Hentai Worth Watch It, which you should all stick around for. You don't have to leave the room. They're going to let you stay. Uh, but everyone keep your clothes on and all that stuff. So it was a really, really good question. <laughs> you are yeah, right here in the front row. Okay. So you said that like at the beginning the uh, you technically pirate. Do the Japanese pirate your stuff because it's uncensored? That's that's okay. That's a good question. So uh, do the do the Japanese now pirate the Faku releases because they're better? Uh, and the answer is yes, actually, they are like, now the first pirate <laughs> Yeah, Faku, because we publish stuff on Censored, you can't access Faku from Japan. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's, no, the first time I saw, so like if you go to like a Faku book or whatever, or like one of the first ones, you know, my, like the credits page, right? Like my, my name is in there, and all the people who worked on it. And like after we released our first book, suddenly we saw it like pop up being scanlated off of our published book version. So I'm like looking at our book translated into like Russian with my name in it, and I'm like, oh my god. It's like a scanlation group's watermark on the page, and I'm like, geez, it's come full circle. <laughs> this is an awesome, awesome. So yeah, uh, please check out Faku. If you have, if you aren't a subscriber, I, I recommend subscribing for a month. Check it out because even if it's your first time, you just subscribe, you get access to the entire catalog of, con of magazine content that we've published, which is all of these magazines. Um, so you can get to read like 600 chapters on that first month, uh, which hopefully is more than you're able to fab to in that first. Yeah, that's month. a lot of math. But yeah. people have to read the wrong on that before. Challenge accepted. Challenge Man found dead. 72 hour binge of masturbating. <laughs> uh, and one cool thing we do, you know, a lot of these magazines have pull out posters and things, so we'll turn them into wallpapers so you can go. This is totally free, you don't have, even have to subscribe. You just go in the forums, you can find all these cool wallpapers from the magazines. Uh, which you definitely should check out because my desktop at home is one of these wallpapers. <laughs> I, do, I don't have company over but yeah. Uh, actually, I have a bunch of skateboards on my wall, all like the naked anime skateboards we made. Yeah. But my mom's cool with it, that's what matters. <laughs> actually, my mom is like awkwardly too cool with it. She'll like tell her friends and her co workers, oh yeah, you should check out my son's website, Faku. <laughs> this story the other day, but I, I went home to visit. She's like, oh, what are you going to, she's like joking around. She's like, oh, what are you going to dedicate one of your books to me in like a four word? <laughs> what? She's like, yeah, right, to my hentai mom. <laughs> mom, you don't understand what that means, what that implies. Like, you don't know how much mom hentai there is. <laughs> Half the time you go in Fosco and it's like, I fucked my mom. The, so, uh, under the Kotatsu or something. Like, you probably should have your mom and see like 40 mom and like mom son destined. Oh, actually, no. oh, failed the one. No, I don't, I don't own that book, that's why I did that. I have special access to it. Uh, so, yeah, everyone stick around for Hentai Worth Watching, and when you get home tonight or tomorrow, Master me. You know, uh, I want you to go on Faku, dim the lights. Put on some boys to men and enjoy yourself. <laughs> enjoy yourself on the of love. So, alright, we will be back in about 15 minutes uh, to talk about some hentai anime that you should watch. Thank you. Yeah.